Hey, I'm Wayne Dyer, and you're listening to Synchronicity with Marie Bernard. Here she is. Hello, welcome to Synchronicity Talk Radio for your mind, body, and soul. I'm your host, Marie Bernard. This is CITR 101.9 FM in Vancouver, or you might be listening in Nova Scotia at Axe Radio Canada or online at CITR.ca, CosmicDimensions.com, EmpowerRadio.com, on the Co-Creator Network, or maybe you might even be watching on YouTube. And today we are having um, a return guest Wendy Newman. She is from 101dates.com. Wendy Newman is committed to people finding uninhibited, connected, to feeling uninhibited, connected, and free in their sexuality and relationships. She's led over a hundred workshops about men, sex, and partnership to thousands of women in the U.S. and Canada. And over the past 10 years, she's interviewed thousands of men on sex, dating, relationships, and women. Add to that the extensive research and input from outside sources and good old-fashioned trial and error. And what you get is someone who has something to say about men, women, and dating. And I just finished her eight-week dating 101 course, and she has another one coming up. So I'm really excited to welcome Wendy Newman back to the show. Welcome. Hi, Marie. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on again. So please fill us in. Um, what What has been going on in your life since the last time you were on the show? Oh, so much. I had, as you know, had a very successful eight-week course. It sent a new flock of women into the world, hopefully ready to conquer dating in a whole new way with a little bit of ease and grace and, and a lot of one-liners in their back pocket to have to whip out when you're with not the one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Other than that, just loving my beautiful life in San Francisco with my partner, Dave, and things are just cooking along. Awesome. And I saw on Facebook today uh, that you recently cured your dog of separation anxiety. I did in 12 days. It was magic. Wow. Did you use any of your like dating techniques? (laughs) No, I'm a big fan of going straight to the professional. And after we had systematically made the situation worse over a period of a month. We called in the big guns and and had someone from ASPA work with us and tell us exactly what to do and exactly what we were doing wrong, which was almost everything. Everything that one would think to do uh, is not the right thing to do in many cases. So, it was, Wow. It was a good time. It was a good time, but persistence. And the bottom line is I just couldn't leave her for a second longer than she was comfortable and just kept increasing that time and it all turned out. Aw. Well, it's interesting that uh, you say all the things that you thought w- would be the right thing to do weren't. And that's often what happens with uh, dating too, isn't it? Yeah. 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 What your feelings will be telling you to do, it might not be the thing to do in that moment. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so let's, uh, for, for people who haven't heard you on the show before, why is that? Why is it that our instinct is generally the wrong thing to do? Well, one of the reasons is our instinct is really committed to having us lock someone down. Find a good provider, protector type who's strong and can protect us. It's all instinct. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with modern day. And locking it down is the thing that we're instinctively driven to do. And one of the things that instinct never takes into account is the quality of your life. So you might be with a man who's not the right man for you, who might not, or the right woman in in one case, in some cases. Uh, You might be with the partner who's in front of you because they're in front of you and your instinct is to lock it down, when really if you dig deeper, they don't have the qualities and attributes that you need to make you happy for the rest of your life, that you can partner with, that you can work with, that you're aligned with, that you have matching futures, often we're more committed to winning the prize and then figuring out what the prize we just won is at a later date. Mm, That is so true. And it's it's interesting. Both men and women do that. Yes. (laughs) And so it's all hormones and instinct and and you just have to train yourself out of doing that? Yeah, you just have to be conscious that that will always be happening and take the extra time it takes to go a little deeper and see really, okay, well, I'm compelled to do this. I'm compelled to say yes to this. But before I say yes, 
well, let's look a little deeper. Let's let's ask a few questions. Let's see if we can wait for a minute to see if the actions follow the words that they're telling me. Let's see if this is real. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I want to go over what you're going to be covering in your 101 dates, uh, or sorry, dating 101 class, which is at 101dates.com, correct? Yeah, sure. Yes. So I just want to let you know that I call it Dating 101 not because it's a beginner class. That 101 is usually something, a term we use when it's a beginner. I call it that because I actually built the class based on my experience on over 101 first dates. And I actually went on 120 dates before I met my partner, Dave, who was lucky 121. So a lot of the course is built up on what not to do. And in those years of dating, I got some facility around what works and what doesn't and really brought together a class to help women not have to go through what I did. Well, I I have to say something about the 101 and the beginner thing. I've done a lot of reading, and you know I'm a a student of Alison Armstrong and Pax, and I've done lots of field work myself in, in dating, and I have to say, even with all my experience, every single class I learned at least one new thing, and a lot of things I was reminded of. Um, mm. that were super, super important that you kind of like, yeah, I've got that fact in my head, but you're not necessarily using it in practice. Yeah. So I found that really helpful. Oh, great. Yeah. I'm really glad to hear that because I knew that you'd been out in the field a long time too. So I'm glad to know that you got value out of it as well. That's I really great. did. Yeah. And, and it was so, it was such a pleasure to be part of the class. Actually, is it okay if anyone uh, has a question, if they call in? Oh, absolutely. I love questions. Okay, so if you have a dating question, and uh, you can be a man or a woman, whatever kind of dating question you have, give us a call, 604-822-2487. That's 604-822-2487 if you want to ask Wendy Newman a question on dating. Now, Wendy, you have been teaching with um, Alison Armstrong's organization, PAX, for quite a long time, um, and you do the Celebrating Men and Sex workshop? I do. I do, and I also do our beginning workshop, which is called Celebrating Men, Satisfying Women, which gives you the base on really understanding men and getting a new point of view. Hmm. I actually heard that uh, rumor that PAX is maybe going to be having more workshops, like possibly in BC and stuff like that. Is that true, or do you know anything? Yeah, it's actually community generated. So if the community calls it to be, it will, and it actually takes the local teams to have that happen. So we're not going to create a new hub city, but the Seattle area and and Canada both are pretty strong. So I know that they're working on doing that. We've already got some coming up in Toronto and and a hub happen, which I know is not very close to you, <laughs> but a hub also happening in Edmonton. So shifting it to Vancouver is not out of the question. It's just going to be a matter of who's interested in making that happen. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right, well, I'll be probably in touch with you guys more about that because I, I really want Alison Armstrong material here, um, PAX material, because it, it's it's just so important. And I've done some workshops with um, a local singles meetup group, and it's just amazing. Um, yeah, our instincts are really just all over the place, and we, we think that we're doing the right thing. And even in online dating, so many people I see are going – uh, I don't know about the women's side, but for the the men that I see, they're putting chemistry, chemistry, chemistry at the top of the list. Mm-hmm. Like chemistry is above all. And I'm not saying that it's not important that you want to obviously be attracted to your partner. But like you said before, we, we want to get the goal. The goal is the chemistry and we want to lock down that person we have a lot of chemistry with. And then six months later, we figure after some of the hormones have worn off, we can't stand them. Yeah, that happens a lot. That happens a lot, and that's exactly what your instincts will drive you to do. And one of the really great things that's an advantage for women, and I'm sorry that men don't have the same advantage overall, is for women, men, not all men, but some men, men we turn out to like quite a bit when we get to know them, they can grow on us. So we have that luxury to be maybe not so attracted in the beginning, and then three months later, you become friends with him or he's a part of your team at work and you get to know him a little better or 
part of your community. You get to see him day in and day out. And all of a sudden, that guy who was just okay to you on first meeting, he's all of a sudden kind of hot. And that's something that we get to experience when we get to see their strength, their integrity, their wit. Men, there's got to be enough there for them visually. We have to be enough of their type for them to either like us or they don't. They don't have that luxury to have us grow on them in the same way, which is unfortunate. And I know a lot of men who get really bummed out about that because there are women in their lives who they're good friends with and they love and think would make a great partner, but it's just not there for them. That's really interesting. Now, is this, um, I, I know that you have polled many, many men. Is this true for all men? Because I know a guy who went out with a girl and he wasn't that into her and they're still together. And it's been a yeah, few years. Yeah, it can happen, and there's definitely the exceptions. And I know married people that, for him, she was never his type, but he liked her so much they went a go at it. Um, it's not something that I personally would be willing to commit to because for me being... Fa- I need to think my partner thinks I'm beautiful and sexy and amazing just the way I am in the body that I have, <laughs> in the shapes that it is. So I wouldn't be one who is willing to sign up for that. But I know people that do and that they have very good relationships and that piece is not as important to them. I would say they're more the exception than the rule. And I had a good friend who was sharing with me that he knew this couple who was married and it's actually the one I was just talking about. And he thought that we should try and be together because he really did like me as a person. But I ultimately passed because I just wasn't willing to not be found someone's type. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So speaking of someone's type, there was a guy on an online dating site and he approached me. Um, and in his profile, it talked all about the the specifics of what he was looking for physically in a woman. And they were the complete opposite of me. And so I wrote back to him and I said, thanks for your email. You know, I'm, I'm reading what you're looking for and it's not me. Um, and I, I just said, you know, Maybe it's none of my business, but if you're actually interested in someone like me, you might want to just leave that out of your profile because as soon as I saw that, I, I can't date you. And he mm. got all angry and defensive, but and he kept pursuing me like for weeks and weeks, kept emailing me. And I'm I'm sorry, but I can't ever date a man I know whose preference is the opposite of me. Mm. Is that the wrong mm-hmm. attitude to have? Well, type is a really crazy thing. It is actually the thing. Type was the thing that I studied the longest. I studied type for five years, and I was driven crazy by type. And I interviewed literally hundreds and hundreds of men about type, maybe even into the thousands. And what I found out was that all men have a type or several types. And and like a flavor, right? Like like think of it like ice cream. I like mint chip. I like Rocky Road. I like right? there's they're very different from each other, but I like them in their own way for what they bring. So they have flavors that they like, and I would approach it from am I one of your flavors? Because as a woman, you can think about it. Think about the men who you find attractive. Think about the famous actor or the famous writer or the famous football star or whoever that is a famous person that you find really attractive. Think about who that is. For me, it's Hugh Laurie. And then I could think about another person also famous who I think is really attractive. Elvis Costello. And I could think of another, I could just give you name after name after name of famous people, and if you line them all up, they're nothing alike. In fact, they do have one common thread. They're probably all really arrogant, or at least they play that on television. (laughs) (laughs) And I find arrogance to be hot. Most women don't, but I do. So for me, I had to finally calm down about type after five years to think, well, I might like a particular type. I might like tall, dark, and handsome. But if I meet a man and he's amazing and he, to me, is hot in my type, he doesn't have to be that. He doesn't have to be tall, dark, and handsome. But you wouldn't tell him. But you wouldn't say my preference is... more from am I your flavor versus I'm not what you said. And there are some men who, yes, they have a very narrow, specific type. She's got to be five to five two, blonde haired, blue eyes, petite. 
she's got to be a hiker, she's got to wear makeup and high heels. It's very specific. But most men are not that specific. In fact, I've talked to many men who their type is women. (laughs) (laughs) Women who are friendly and receptive and welcoming. All different shapes, sizes, colors. But they don't go up to you on your first date and say, hey, I actually like, you know, brunettes that look nothing like you. Yeah, that like, I, I couldn't get that out of my head. No. Yeah. Um, I just I don't know. I mean, I, I under I totally get the, the flavor. I mean, one of my exes, the the woman he was with before me for a decade was Asian. And then he married someone who looks uh, creepily a lot like me. So he obviously has more than one type which is okay. But, you know, he doesn't advertise that he wants the opposite of his type. And then, or, you know, like, I just felt it was sort of, for me, once that's out there, I just feel like "Mm, I can't do it. Mm. Yes, but you can never predict his type. And you and I and many women around the world will look at the X to figure out what his type is. And that's not the right place to look where you should be looking is into his eyes while you're asking, am I your type? Because I dated somebody right after my marriage ended 10 years ago. And we lived in a very small town. I knew his ex-wife, and I was newly separated, so we're both newly separated. And I knew his ex-wife to be literally the opposite of me, literally the opposite of me. But he swears we are the same type. There's a Hmm. good 100 pounds difference between us. Wow. And we were the same type to him. Wow. I had long hair, she had short hair. She had brown eyes, I had green eyes. I had red hair, she had brown hair. She's Italian, I'm pasty white white. Totally opposite to me. And did you ask him for more specifics on what he meant by type? He said it was our essence. He said we had the same eyes and the same smile. I couldn't see it to save my life. Hmm. So you never want to try and guess a man's type. What you want to do is you want to figure out if what you have is enough of what he's looking for. Don't look for external evidence. It'll drive you crazy because you'll be comparing and contrasting and seeing how you don't measure up because that's what your instinct will do to you. That voice in your head is mean. (laughs) <laughs> she's mm-hmm. a mean, mean lady who has mean things to say about how you're different and don't measure up. Okay, but if a guy specifically tells you, like this guy, this is my preference, this is what I like, and then approaches me. Yeah, I think you did the right thing. You said, I'm never going to be that, and I would recommend if that's not your only type that you might want to rewrite that. And if he was super persistent, depending on how I felt about him, I might give him a chance. And if he was, like you said, being kind of jerky about it, I would not. That would be the end. Good. Well, that's what I did. So, (laughs) See, if he on paper looked amazing, like everything I ever wanted, I would try and see if he was being persistent with me, what that persistence was about. Yeah, I think if there was more there, I probably wouldn't have been quite so quick to dismiss it. Yeah. But um, between what I saw and his response and his attitude, I just didn't really feel like it was a match for me. Um, and then the more people, I mean, I find when people argue with me, like I, like like they have some claim or right to date me, I find that that is a really big turnoff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. In your studies with men, do you know why some men do that and make have that approach? Yeah, I don't know why men do what they do in that regard. But what I always am contending with is my own instinct. So there's the difference between instinct, I got to lock him down, and your intuition, this could be a match or, oh, no, this isn't a match. And one of the things that we do because of our knee-jerk response to lock one down, we will override our intuition. So we will let our feelings override our intuition. And one of the things that women need to do is listen to their intuition. We'll give him another chance and another chance because maybe we'll warm up to him and maybe he could be the one and he looks so good on paper and 
I'm just not feeling it yet, but I'll keep going. And then all of a sudden he likes you. Now you have external pressure because he likes you and you don't want to be displeasing to someone who likes you so much. That extra pressure of him liking you gets stronger and you stay. That's the scenario that happens often as well. When you intuitively know he's not the one, but you're going to stick it out because ending it seems hard and you're hoping it could turn out. All right. I have tons more questions for you, Wendy, but I want to put out that number. Right now we are speaking with Wendy Newman. She is the author of 101 First Dates, a survival guide for the single girl. You can find her at 101dates.com. And coming up very soon, she has another eight-week teleclass for women um, called Dating 101. So you can go and check out her website 101dates.com if you want more information about that. And I'll also have a link up to that on my website, spiritualshow.com. And if you have a question for Wendy, the number again is 604-822-2487. That's 604-822-2487. Now, Wendy, you talk about how we ignore our intuition. We follow our instincts. What about, because we, we don't just have the intuition and the instincts battling it out. We also have friends <clears throat> telling us that, you know, <laughs> uh, as one example, uh, in recent years, I have had some very long-term relationships. And the reason they were so long-term is because I stayed longer than I should have. Um, and I no longer do that. And people look at me now and judge me that like I'm unsuccessful in relationships, like I can't maintain a relationship. And that's not the case. It actually takes a lot of willpower to leave a dead end relationship. Um, so one of the things that I'm constantly battling with is, especially if I'm not sure and I want to talk to a friend and I'm not even asking for advice, but they'll start giving me all this advice. As an example, uh, when I first started dating a few years ago, there was a guy I decided to take on as a friends with benefits because it had been a long time and he was very uh, passive and non-threatening. <laughs> so mm -hmm. felt like the, the perfect guy to sort of break myself in on. <laughs> and uh, I told a friend a few weeks into it, I have to get away from this guy. I'm falling in love with him and he's a complete disaster. And she said, you're just afraid of love. You should stay with him. And she convinced me that I was being afraid. And that was not the case. I knew this guy was all wrong for me. And I, and I never intended to have feelings for him. And I felt myself falling in love with him. I knew better than to get further involved. But I listened to my friend's advice. And it, she wasn't the only one giving me that advice. And it was awful and painful. Yeah. What do you do about that? Yeah, it happens a lot. Their instincts want to lock a man down for you, too. Oh, my God, are you they serious? They think that they're the survival of humans has everything to do with coupling and procreating and keeping the species alive on the planet. Therefore, you need to lock someone down and get busy, get to work. And there's a ridiculous amount of status in that, single versus coupled. It's frustrating and annoying, and I don't like it. If I could change it, I would, but there it is. You know, they want to make sure that you're in good shape, that you're looked after, et cetera, et cetera. So their instincts, too, will be, if they love you and they're concerned about you and they mean well, will be very interested in locking it down. Now, if they're coupled, they're going to try and help you because clearly you're failing at what they know how to do and they're going to be very helpful with you and they'll usually have really great uh, pieces of advice for you at the time where you're the most vulnerable. One of the things I teach in my workshop is how to be in great shape and how to thwart that off because you're usually going to get hit with great tips and advice from people when you least need them, <laughs> when they can affect you the most, when they can be the most impactful in a negative way. So, again, I just want to reiterate, trust your intuition. You know. You know what's right for you. And also, if you really take the time out 
to figure out what it is you need, what it is you want, what it is you can't tolerate in a partner, what what things do make a person a mesh, not the right person for you, not the right person to align with. Once you sort that out and you have it literally on a list somewhere <laughs> in your Mac or wherever, you can actually go to, okay, I've been dating this guy three and a half weeks now. We're brand new at this. I like him, but let me look back at my list. Let me see if there's any deal breakers on here that I'm avoiding looking at because I really like him. Let me look and see if our futures are aligned. Let me look and see what I know about him so far, if things match up. Ooh, ooh, there's that thing. I don't know that about him. Next date we go on. I should figure that out. Is is he a smoker? I don't know. He's never smoked in front of me. It's a deal breaker for me. So to have all that outlined and know who you are, what you have to offer, and what you're looking for, what you're dying to receive in a partner, what you're dying to give a partner. If you have that outlined ahead of time, when your friend says that to you, you can say, oh, yeah, I could totally see how you would think that, but it actually doesn't have to do with my ability to be intimate. What it has to do with is I need this, and he doesn't have that. Hmm. Wow. Okay, I love that you said that. And I'm just blowing my mind the whole instinct, like your friends have an instinct to to hook you up too. Because yeah, I mean, I've had friends who care about me. And I'll be like, I think he's mentally unstable. I think I should end it. Well, you say so many nice things about him. I know you Mm -hmm. really have a nice time with him. Maybe you're being too sensitive. And it's like, no, he's a sociopath. But you should be with him because he's nice to you most of the time. (laughs) Um, So it gets really confusing. And but also, I, I think because so many, so few people actually get really clear on what they need, it still seems a lot of the times like maybe I just shouldn't even communicate with my friends about dating at all because so few people think that your needs are valid. Well, I wouldn't necessarily stop communicating with my friends about who I'm dating because then that you know, that that withholding will cut down on your intimacy and connection with them, I would recommend instead just holding a boundary with them. So you share something really wonderful with them and they take that in and that's great. And then you share that you're not thinking that he's the one for you and they bring that great thing up that you mentioned. And you can say, yeah, it is, it's really great to spend time with him and there's this thing I need that we're just not aligned. And it's actually, it's crucial for me, for a partner. I would rather be alone than to have a partner that has this this issue. Or I'd rather be alone than to have a partner that doesn't have X or does have Y, like that. Hmm. And it's a really great bar to ask yourself, is it better to be with him or is it better to be alone? Mm -hmm. For 10 years I answered, it was better to be alone (laughs) to some degree. Yeah. Well, I feel I feel that way too. I mean, it's it's nice and and I think sometimes when when we feel lonely, that's when we're much more likely to lower our standards. Yes. And spend time with people who, you know, I mean, because they're they have lots of nice qualities. They're nice to spend time with. Mm-hmm. Um and so in this moment, I don't have to be alone. Yeah, and that's a that's a really good point about lowering your standards. It's another thing that you'll hear from your well-meaning friends, that your standards are too high. Now, you might have things on your list that you need that conflict. You know, if you need him to be a millionaire, but you need him to spend a lot of time with you, that's usually a conflicting need. If millionaires usually work really hard and they don't have a lot of extra time to spend with you. Mm -hmm. So you might have a wish list of attributes in a man that conflict with each other. That would be a problem in the real world, right? But if you have a set of attributes or qualities that you admire in yourself and your best friends that you need in a partner, the like-mindedness, and those attributes don't conflict with each other, so in other words, it could be a real person, (laughs) your standards are not too high. It might take you a while to find that right match. It took me a really long time 
Took me over 10 years and 120 other first dates. But I got it, and I'm, I was a really hard match. I was a super hard match. And I waited it out, and I heard over and over and over, you're asking for too much, your standards are too high. So, Wendy, in the beginning, or at what point, maybe you were always just totally strong and had awesome boundaries, but was there ever a, a point early on when you listened to people who said your standards are too high? I listened to people late on. <laughs> I can't help but to feel that, and there are certainly there were certainly men in my past who I dated who i I liked quite a bit and even loved and really wished wished that I could have partnered with them because they were amazing, and I knew um that they just weren't the right person for me one one person in particular I just adore to this day, and I know after a particular amount of time we would have run our course. So I I wasn't willing, even though many things were there that were really beautiful. So just because there are really beautiful things there doesn't mean it's a match that could give you the run for your money you need for the rest of your life, you know, or at least, you know, rest of his life, rest of your life, whatever you're signing up for there. But not everyone's looking for rest of their life either, right? Exactly. So, all right. That's true. Again, if you have a question for Wendy Newman, 604-822-2487. People get shy. They don't want to talk because they don't want their voice heard on the radio talking about dating stuff. But 604-822-2487 if you're brave and have a question for Wendy about dating. So can we talk about um, one of the things I really liked is that you did get to, um, in your in your workshop you worked on, dating, online dating, meeting people in the real world. And then you also worked on what to do once you're actually dating someone you want to be in a relationship with and once you're in a relationship. Um, So can you give us just maybe a little bit more detail about the workshop and when you're going to be starting this? Yeah, the next one starts Thursday. So it's Thursday evenings from 6 to 7. They're recorded and... Another one won't come up for quite a while, so the next one right is coming right up, coming up on Thursday. And I really start from the class one of what do you need to be in great shape to even start dating? And I don't mean like great shape hit the gym. I mean great spiritual shape. So how do you get yourself into good shape to be single and to be strong and to be out there so you're not just settling for the crumbs that are in front of you? You're not locking it down just because it's right there, even though it's not quite right. So teach you what to do to be in good shape, to take care of yourself. And as you're dating, you want to still reflect to that first class to do those same things so you don't drive yourself a little crazy. Because once we like somebody, we start to lose our balance a little bit. (laughs) So from the what to do before you even date, I go into where to find him, what isn't working, what might work instead, We talk about online later on. I talk about really great one-liners that I found work that get you out of all kinds of situations. We talk about paying for dates, how to empower a man to make him amazing on a first date, how you can be an amazing first date to anybody, how to get out of a first date quickly, (laughs) how to get out of a first date in five minutes with grace, if you know that you do not want to stick around longer than that. And then, like you said, we go on to, okay, so you like him. Let's transition this into dating and how to have the exclusive dating conversations. I have one whole call about sex. Um, I I love that topic. It, I'm passionate about that topic. It was really hard for me to only make it one class <laughs> instead of eight of eight. But, yes, so we have one all about sex. and. I take questions all throughout the class as well. And are you going to do any more workshops on either more more sex related or f- maybe for men? I do coaching with men one on one. I don't have enough interest from men to do anything more and my target audience is usually women from 35 to 70. 
And a lot of women speak exactly the way you did, Marie, in terms of I was in a relationship and I stayed in it too long, or I've been in multiple relationships where I stayed in it too long, and that's why I'm still single, or that I just haven't found him yet, you know, coming out of divorces and things like that also. So I don't know really what to tell the 22-year-old about dating, although I'd probably have some great tips for her, mostly my clientele late 30 on up. And for the men that I work with, so far... It's the cutest thing. The men that I've been working with, they're usually mm, closer to late 40s, early 50s, and beyond coming out of a marriage and do not have a clue on how to do this crazy thing called dating. Aw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, who does? I mean, it really is a skill. And so many of us, I mean, most of us don't have it because we meet people through our social circles or in school and we spend five or 10 years with them. And then we're like, oh my gosh, now what? Because we don't, you, when, when you're with the same group of people every day, especially for women, like you said, we, we tend, guys can grow on us. And so that's how we end up liking people who are in our, our sphere. Yeah. And then finding that um, out in the world when you don't have those same kinds of connections, it's just really weird and and to me online dating feels so inorganic Mm -hmm. um do you have any tips on making it feel slightly more enjoyable (laughs) (laughs) i know that most people have a negative response to online dating and i get it and i did it a lot and it is the way to meet people outside of your circle And the way to make it more enjoyable is to not drag it out with back and forth and back and forth and writing and talking. Meet quickly. I know you think that you're not wanting to waste your time and you want to vet him a little bit better before you meet in real life, but you're going to spend way more time writing and chatting on the phone than it would take you to put on a cute date outfit and to go out to the coffee shop across the street from and around the corner from your house and meet that person for 15 minutes. Done. My recommendation about online dating is to do it, and when you're doing it, convert it into real time quickly. Because before you actually meet face-to-face, it's not real. It's just not real. And what do you do? Okay, I want to put that number out there again. 604-822-2487. That's 604-822-2487. I mean, you run the Celebrating Men and Satisfying Women workshop as well as Celebrating Men and Sex for PAX. Um, these are, I, I don't, I feel like I know people are nervous to pick up the phone and call in and have their voice on the radio, but if you understood what a wealth of information you have access to here, <laughs> um, I mean, it's just the, I've, I've only taken the Celebrating Men, Satisfying Women. It's an amazing course. I really want to take the Queen's course and I'd love it if it was up here. Um, mm-hmm. Anything to do with sex is always fun to talk about, um, but I haven't taken that course either. I can imagine how amazing it is just from taking your um, your tele class. Thank you. And that's really only what eight eight hours of material. Yeah, the actual you could just get the recordings, and it's a little under eight hours. But the class is um, it's an hour to an hour fifteen because this is a conversation, and I want women to get their questions answered. So it's about an hour fifteen per call, and they're also recorded. If you do the class and you're not able to make the session, your class recording will be provided for you, not the pre-recorded ones. So can I answer a question that I got earlier today? Yeah, please. Okay, great. So I got a question earlier today, which was. Are what do you consider cheating when you're dating, and is that even possible? And my answer to that is, if you're single and dating, you're not cheating and you're not being cheated on. So, in other words, there's not a ton of perks to being single, but one of the perks of being single is you're autonomous and free to do what you want, whenever you want, with whoever you want, and you don't have to answer to anybody. It's your business. It's completely your business. And until you've had a one-on-one sit-down conversation about being exclusive and what that means to both of you, you don't know anybody anything about anything. You are free to do what you want, and so are they. 
So as a single dating person, no, you can't get cheated on. You're not being cheated on, and he's not cheating on you, and you're not cheating on him. It's until you've had the more exclusive conversation that that would be a possibility. And so what do you do, Wendy, about some of these guys? I I actually had one guy a while ago who um, we hadn't even met yet. And he was wanting to know who, how, how many people I was dating and all that. And I, I said, you know, I'm dating. And he wanted, he's like, well, I don't date serial daters. And I said, well, you know, um, I'm not a serial dater, but I'm not going to stop dating until I'm committed in a relationship. So if that's a problem for you, um, I'm not going to be your match. And he kept pursuing me. He's actually been pursuing me for a couple of years and doesn't seem to get the idea of no, <laughs> I don't want to be with you anymore. <laughs> but um, that's bless his heart. Anyway. Um, so what do you do with people who just have such a clearly different idea of what dating is? If you go on one date, and then you should just automatically be exclusive, and they'll actually try to argue about it. Yeah, um, I'm not easy to argue with. So that wouldn't go very well with me. Um I'm pretty clear about when I'm ready to get exclusive and when I'm not, and it has everything to do with how well I know someone and how well they match up with me to see if we can give it a go to see if it works. And I could never get all that information on a first date. And I'm not, even if I came with a big list and I was packing my interview list of all the qualities I need, which by the way, I never do that on a first date. I don't recommend that you do that either. But even if I did, even if I had that long interview list, there's no way of knowing until I've actually spent time with him to see if everything he said matches what he does. And I'm not saying that men lie or that women lie, but sometimes we have inflated thoughts about what we produce and what we don't produce. (laughs) We have different ideas about what we mean by what we say. So I just want to make sure that the person who's talking to me actually lives the life that I've pictured from what they've said. You're never going to know that on a first date. It's so cute. One of the biggest kicks I get out of looking at online profiles is in almost every one, women say they want an open and honest man. You can't vet that way. You're never going to know. They think they're honest because they are. And if they're not, they're going to say they're honest because they're lying. (laughs) (laughs) You just can't figure it out. You're not going to be able to vet it. It was my experience that the men I dated were honest. They didn't need to put that in there. Mm. So, yeah, the whole lock it down after one date or a couple of dates, okay. But that tells me something about who that person is. That person isn't discerning. Mm -hmm. That person isn't living in the reality of, are we really two humans that can match up, that can line up? This person isn't doing their homework. Do do I want to live with a partner who doesn't do their homework? Is that going to be the best thing for my survival? That's interesting that you say that, Wendy, because uh, I had, I'm sure you you saw the uh, the post on Facebook the other day because I actually tagged you in it um, mm-hmm. because I feel like taking your class actually helped me with this. I know from experience that it's best to sort of move at least somewhat slowly. You don't want to jump into like an Insta relationship. Um, and sometimes it, it, I've, there's sort of all of these multiple, multiple issues that I have. Um, Like I I tend to take on the really sweet guys, these like lost puppy dog guys, because they're really nice and I like them, but I know that they're not really quite what I need. Um, And the other day I had a guy who was totally full on wanting to be in a relationship way, way too, way too early. Um, And I said to him that I really would prefer to move more slowly and get to know a person. And his response was, well, that's how you get to know a person is you spend tons and tons of time with them at first. And and then he was like, oh, you know, I mean, I I know that sometimes, um, well, and I said, well, I need to know if that time is, 
if that person is worth my investment of, of so much time. And he he admitted that sometimes, yeah, he'll be really full on for about six months and then pull back. And I said, well, if, if that happened to me, that's false advertising. I'd need to look for someone else immediately. Um, and he sort of had this attitude that I should just be like in an instant relationship with him and we should just talk for two hours a day every day so we know everything about each other as soon as possible. And for me, I had to say no. I just felt like what you said. He it, he wasn't being discerning enough. It's like you literally don't know anything about me and you want us both to invest that much time and energy. Why not just sort of pace it a little bit and decide if two weeks from now we actually even want to be in the same room together? Yeah. Yeah, and you certainly can spend tons and tons of time with him and not be in an exclusive relationship. You can do that. I mean, I know that when I met my partner, by the second date, I was sunk. By the second date, I was in. And I knew I couldn't be in on the second date. (laughs) That's crazy. And there's all this, you know, fairy tale and romance and meant to be and singing in my head going, oh, but it's true. And we both kept our cool. We both kept our cool. And we both saw each other often and, you know, continued to see what was possible. But, yeah, you can... I wouldn't worry about, you know, setting rules around it in terms of timeline. Timeline is something that we get very caught up on in both directions. It's not happening fast enough or it's happening too fast. Just, you know, be yourself and be autonomous as long as possible till you see that you have enough information to create whatever deal you want to create with that person in an exclusive relationship or not. No judgment. A lot of people are creating different things for their lives right now. Well, when children are not involved. And sometimes when children are involved. So, hmm. you know, I'm... One of the things that I most want for men and for women is to understand that the best strategy to employ is authenticity. Finding out who you are, being strong in who you are, and looking for the person that matches you. And unfortunately, many, 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 many of the dating books out there will give you amazing strategies to land that person, to land the person you're looking for. And in all the strategies, they usually have you do things that aren't yourself, (laughs) nowhere near yourself they'll have you do things that are strategic and game playing and what they will do is they might cause that person to to like you or to chase you but what you're effectively doing in that strategy is throwing them off balance so if you're looking at romance and you're reading a strategy dating book and you're employing all the strategies you effectively ha- have that other person totally caught off balance. And you might end up getting them or you might end up having them run in the other direction, either way. But if they do end up staying, you have now set yourself up for a relationship that's adversarial. And when they catch their balance, they're going to be a different person. So what are you going to do? You're going to keep keeping them off balance so they're chasing their tail and chasing you? Or are you going to let them settle into a relationship with you and then you get to see who they really are when they're not all spun out? Wendy, can I just... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I wanted to get some clarification on that. So how is maintaining your cool when you're two dates in and dreaming of forever, how is that different than strategy? I would tell the truth about it. And he would, too. I'm totally crazy about you. This is amazing. Let's see each other again. I wouldn't do the, we need to wait X amount of days until we see each other. You need to call me, and then I'm going to ignore your call. You're going to call me on on Tuesday. I'm not going to return that call until Wednesday night. Oh, that's me. Wait, Thursday morning. (laughs) That's a better strategy. If you ask me out on Friday for a date on Saturday, I'm going to be busy. You need to learn that you need to call me sooner than that. Strategy. 
Okay, but if one person wants to see the other person all the time and the other person is like, whoa, I like a lot of attention and even this is too much for me, like, that's okay, right? To be, okay. chill out, please. Yeah, that's just something to work out. That's okay. just something to work out. Exactly. Okay, so that doesn't wow, mean he's you want like to see a- me every day. I don't have time for that. What I have time for is two times a week, maybe three. Okay. Do you want me to reserve a particular day of the week for you? Hmm. I like that. That's good. Yeah. Okay. And one of the things that I hear, especially from women a lot, is I know he likes me. I really like him. We're seeing each other. It is now Wednesday. I want to plan my weekend. He hasn't set up the weekend date yet. I know it's coming. I know he really is going to do something, but he's so busy at work. He doesn't usually think of it till Friday. And what if I miss that fun time with my girlfriends? And what I recommend you do is that you be honest. Do you send him a quick email or a text or you give him a phone call and say, hey, I'm guessing we're probably going to see each other this weekend, but you haven't set anything up yet. That's totally fine. Do you want me to hold Friday or Saturday or Sunday or none of them? We don't have to work out the details. I just want to know what to save in my calendar because my dance card is starting to fill up. Mm. Okay, Wendy, that is when you're you're already sort of dating someone and it's established that you're, you might not be exclusive, but you're seeing right. each other, right? So yeah. what if you've had a first date with someone and it's possible he might have changed his mind or might not be interested, but it seemed like he was really interested and you get the impression that maybe he... Uh, got the vibe that that I wasn't interested. Do you get in touch or do you just say, well, if he's not going to pursue me, then bye? Yeah, I don't have like a general rule on that. I would play it by ear on whoever it was and what happened. But I have no problem with you reaching out and getting in touch with him and just sending a quick text or email saying, um, don't remember if I told you this, but thank you so much. We had such a good time, and I can't wait to spend more time with you so we can talk about Asia some more. Your trip there sounds fascinating. Something like that. Okay. But what if he totally was like, oh, I was hoping that my non <laughs> no communication would be a hint. I don't know. Then I feel like, well, I feel like it's presumptuous. Well, if that's the truth, then for him, then you send that email, he wouldn't respond. Mm-hmm. You would continue to do the not response. Okay. Or he would respond and say, you know what, we're not quite a match. Or he would respond and say, no. Okay. All right. Sometimes it's no. (laughs) It's not always yes. Sometimes it's no. The trick to a no is to keep yourself in good shape so you don't go under. That you had pinned hopes on him and now he's not responding or that he's a no. You know he's clearly not responding on purpose. He's a no. One of the first things a woman will do is start playing back all the things that happened on that date and blaming herself for all the ways she blew it. If I hadn't have told that crazy story about my family, if I hadn't have been sitting right next to him on that bar stool, maybe he wouldn't have saw that side fat roll underneath <laughs> my shirt. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. All of the things that we make up about why. And it's never that. It's never that. Never? Never. It's never that roll of fat? It's never that roll of fat. Are you sure? How many men Positive. have you asked about this? <laughs> Positive. If you spent two hours on a date with him, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. And you thought you were going out again? No. All right. Well... Wendy. Now, sometimes we're not their type, and that's the problem with online dating. You don't know until you meet face-to-face, and there's one way, not totally around that, but one way that will help you with 90% of that is have an online picture of yourself that's a full-body shot so he can check you out and see if you're his type. Good. Yes. And because a lot of guys assume if you just have upper-body shots that you're actually... Um, have a reason to hide the rest of your body absolutely so yeah 
Uh, well, Wendy, we just have a few minutes left in the show before Parts Unknown comes up on CITR. So I want to plug your site again, 101dates.com. Your workshop teleclass, eight-week teleclass, is starting on Thursday. And then you have one, what, about every 10 weeks? Or how many times a year do you offer that? Mm, I'm probably going to do about four this year. Um, so every couple of months they come up. So if you're interested, jump on the class this Thursday. And if you can't make this first Thursday, you can still sign up and I'll send you the first recording and you can dive right into the second week. Oh, perfect. Because sometimes people listen on podcast and so. Yeah. And also, I mean, there's the type of person who loves to do a workshop and there's a the type of person who loves to just consume the product. So if you just want to listen, I have recordings available, but it is not the class. The class is very different. The class is its own entity. You can do live Q&A. You get 40 minutes one-on-one -on -one with me. You do homework. There's much, much more to the class than there is the recording. So there's a big difference in price, but also a big difference in what you get in your transformation out of the class. Wonderful. Well, we have just a couple of minutes left in the show. And Wendy, I'm just wondering if there's anything that you'd like to add or, or the most important point you want to drive home today. Well, Maria, I just love being on this call with you. It just feels like chatting with a girlfriend, so thank you for that. And, yeah, if you're looking for a strategy, the best one to employ is authenticity. And if you're ever stuck with what exactly should I say, you should just say what you'd say to a friend. Just treat him like you're friends with him because ultimately that's what your partner is going to be, your friend. I can't treat him like a friend. I might sleep with him. <laughs> then he can actually see who I really am. That would be tragic. I know. He can't see that for at least three years. <laughs> exactly. I'm just kidding, of course. But that's what it feels like sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, I don't know if we have time for this. Um. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Yeah, Chris Arific is in the background getting getting ready for the show. Um. How important, we, we go through all the things that we want as women in our partner. How important is it for us to figure out what we have to offer a partner? Oh, it's huge. It's huge because you have gifts that you're dying to give. And I know for me personally, the hardest part about being single is I felt completely underutilized. And all these mother-type related nurturing gifts that I wanted to give and great coaching partnership and have his back kind of deals and there was all these things that I wanted to be for somebody and there just wasn't that buddy to give them to yet so super important because if he doesn't want, want who you have what you have to give him the gifts that you bring that's another thing to look at that you might not be a match you know what if he doesn't care that you're a gourmet cook what if Taco Bell's great for him that's going to be terrible for you you're going to get your feelings hurt all the time so it's really important to look at what you're looking for. Also important to look at who are you as a partner and what do you have to give. Thank you so much, Wendy. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you for answering all of my questions. I, I feel kind of like I was like asking you too many questions, so I appreciate <laughs> your patience with me. Um, and if you do take the teleclass, ask questions because I felt like I was one of the only people who ever asked questions and Wendy is such a wealth of information so take advantage of her brain thank you yeah yes please use me up it's what I'm here for I really want to give women the answers that they're looking for and give them hope to keep going because sometimes we just want to give up and it's, it's so worth it on the other end of it it's totally worth it Yay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, thank I, you so much. I'm out of time now, but again, it's 101dates.com and your book is 101 First Dates, A Survival Guide for the Single Girl. And you can find links as well up on spiritualshow.com, which is my site. Thank you so much, Wendy. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thanks, Ray. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, she's so fun. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, up next is Chris Terrific with Parts Unknown. Oh, I love you so much. Are you going to say it? Oh, namaste. Namaste.